Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Stardust Show, powered by Radio Workshop. This is Dr. Marina Nani, and tonight I'm co-hosting the show together with an amazing, amazing personality within the uh, world of personal development. Uh, is somebody perhaps you met before, and if you didn't, it is time to. Uh, Simone, you are going to be one of our keynote speakers at the Authors Awards in London in uh, March, on the 24th of March. And yep. I know you have a topic that will never run out of steam. We have a topic that people only dream to think about, but you nail it. You made it into your own. You put your name on it, and now it's providing not only fast results, but amazes everyone with the energy you bring at the table and with the uh, set of uh, circumstances you are transforming in people's life simply by sharing with them your own solution to a problem that at some point you had to find um, Absolutely. the exit. So tell us more about uh, what had happened, what brought you where you are in your life. So what brought me where, where I am in my life right now, which is to help uh, other experts uh, to grow six-figure coaching and speaking businesses, is uh, that I struggled a lot uh, when I started my own business. I remember my background uh, was in the catering industry. That uh, was my first job. I started working as a waiter at the age of 14 because... Uh, you know, my parents divorced uh, and I uh, wanted to have some money for, for myself to you not know, to go on holiday, to go out with my friends. Um, because uh, after the divorce, uh, there was not much money in the house. And uh, I, and the I worked took it all. <laughs> pardon, the lawyers took it all, <laughs> the lawyers took it all exactly, <laughs> exactly, Marina. The lawyers, the lawyers took them all, and uh. uh I worked so hard that at the age of 19, I became the youngest Michelin star restaurant manager in Europe. So wow. I was earning a lot of money from the age of 19. I was uh, managing a beautiful Michelin star restaurant. And that's how from Italy, I was recruited to work in a Michelin star restaurant here in London. Wow. We had clients uh, like Woody Allen, uh, the Rolling Stones, uh, the Pink Floyd, the famous singers, football players. It, it was amazing in that place but then uh, i was looking for something different i arrived at the age of 22 that i said uh, i want to do something different i've been working in restaurants for eight years uh, full on and uh, i feel now is a uh, time for me to do something else i wasn't really sure about what the next thing would be <laughs> Yeah, the next you know, big thing, yes. <laughs> the next big thing. But even a small thing, I wasn't even sure about a small thing. Even don't think about a big one. <laughs> and that's how I started attending uh, seminars uh, and, you know, started find on Google online, uh, you know, how to find your passion or how to find your dream job. A and suddenly all this world of personal development opened up. I learned about seminars. I learned about webinars i went uh watched the, all the youth inspirational and motivational youtube videos and so that's how i learned about tony robbins and les brown and and so on and i was really inspired about this work uh, and i found myself attending every single seminar you can imagine every week and every day every evening i was at a free seminar i was always there front row you will see me there but yeah. but but uh, Simone, uh, because I've been uh, not a seminar junkie, but I was even more crazy than you were. I traveled the world. I I've been uh, basically going on five continents in one thousand wow. days to discover what is this personal development. What is this all about? And uh, I met very rich people and very poor people. And then I thought something is wrong. Something mm -hmm. doesn't add up. There are too many uh, poor people who are struggling, who are hungry, like yourself, to find out what is there is more, what is the definition of success, what is that they are not knowing. And, of course, I came to my own conclusions and I'm, I'm leading my life and uh, we, we are launching um, BYP, which is Broadcast Your Passion, which is a TV channel. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I always said to people, um, 
forget about marketing, broadcast your passion. But at the time, people thought I lost it. There's something wrong with me. But now we are living in a different age. Yeah. I think it's a shift happening. I think people understand there is more and they want more, not because they want to have more, but because they want to be more and because they want to give more. And I think that desire is what drives the whole um, 2018 ahead of us. And mm -hmm. I know you didn't like very much what we've seen because you thought, like myself, something doesn't add up. Yeah, what, absolutely. What, what was the, 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 um, what was your struggle? What was that you wanted to change? So some, there were a few things that uh, I felt uh, that I wanted, to change, I wanted to change that, that uh, didn't add up for me that I didn't like. Starting from the way that uh, a lot of speakers were selling. Uh, I didn't like that because, you know, they, they, they give this incredible presentation. They promise you that you can have this dream life, which actually even they don't have. Because most of the time, to be so successful, they're working pretty hard. <laughs> so they're, they're basically telling lies and then selling a dream that really doesn't happen in order just to tell you... A, thousand dollars or thousand pound program so first of all i said now we need to be real with our audience uh, when i wanted to sell i wanted just to tell things as they are there is going to be work involved uh, maybe you're not even gonna make it i cannot guarantee you're gonna make it i can give you everything i have to help and support you but at the end of the day you are the one to do the work so, so it, is, it, is, it is actually fair to say that uh, like any business because it doesn't matter a uh, uh, michelin uh, business or speaking business. It's still a business. But Absolutely. what I did not know at the time, I did not realize this is a business. I did not. I, I, I just thought there are visionary thinkers, people who are helping others. I couldn't get my head around and I couldn't understand uh, the selling part either. Right. But, but I understand now that, um, and I was very successful or everybody thought I'm very successful, but I did not feel successful. You see, mm -hmm. that was my 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 um, my personal uh, struggle, and I couldn't share with anyone because they already thought I'm very successful. And when I was telling them, I don't know why you think I'm successful because I'm not. They thought I'm just um, uh, modest, but I was telling them the truth, and nobody would believe me. And I was <laughs> telling them, it's not easy. It's what you make of it. Uh, I I pack my bags, I fill them with books, and I travel to South Africa or to China, or to uh, South America, or to North America. Uh, and I don't have time even to feed my dog, you know? I have to be always jumping from an airplane to the next conference and go on stage and speak from the heart. And I could not make myself understood because everybody mm -hmm. thought I'm very successful. And I did not feel successful because I was paying for everything. So mm -hmm. I wanted people who understand there is more to understand what is possible when they realize it's entirely up to them. It's what they make of it. I cannot be uh, Les Brown. I don't wish to be. I want to be Marina Nani. I don't mm -hmm. want to be Tony Robbins. I admire him greatly, but I don't want to be him. I want to be Marina Nani. So you decided you are going to be Simone Vincenzi and you mm -hmm. are going to tell it as it is. Tell us Absolutely. more, because this is very exciting. Absolutely. So, uh, first of all, I realized, as I was saying before, that uh, I didn't like the way people were selling. And I, did, I wanted to find another way. Then I realized that um, also the programs that uh, some of the, the, these big gurus were selling they actually didn't uh, help and support. They didn't give you the, the structure around you to make sure that actually you take action on them. So I said, I need to do something different. So these are the things that I decided in particular to change in, uh, in my own business. Because at the beginning, yes, I was, um, I, I was there. I was going mesmerized. to a lot of conferences. You're mesmerized, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going there. I was going to a lot of conferences like yourself, but uh, I wasn't making... Uh, enough money and uh, the reason why as yourself i wasn't treating this like a business now a business is meant to make money 
So I was feeling somehow guilty to overcharge people, to not give them that, that if I were to pay too much, then they would not, uh, they would not buy and all these things that were just in my head. And then somehow probably also yourself, you realize that uh, it's complete crap. It doesn't really, <laughs> a business is a business. Uh, the, actually, the more people pay, the more action they take on what they buy. And so there are no, all I, these uh, I, I, crap. No, I that... realize, Simone, I realize the same that uh, people value what they pay for and they only pay what they value. Absolutely. And th that was a, a breaking, a breakthrough moment for me. And um, I realized that actually um, I'm a grandmother now. So I want quality time with my grandchildren. So I stopped traveling to start with. That's why we have this show because. I was traveling and people were coming to me and um, to to the stage and I was helping them and I was doing mastermind all over the world. But then I thought, well, what's the point of being with, with these people if I cannot be with, with my own family? So mm -hmm. I, I had to um, to understand that actually the the true product or offer I'm making is my time. I'm offering my time, so I have to charge for that. Because otherwise, um, I, I will soon run out. I will never remember uh, what I've been here for. So you, you see, uh, charging people uh, is not necessarily um, for what you know. It's for what they will learn about themselves and for your time. I think this is fair to say. Absolutely. Yes, it's very fair to say. It's really important that uh, you value yourself as an expert, uh, that uh, you value yourself and uh, you do everything you can to help and support your client and getting paid for it. Now, you can have different programs and different products to support them. And uh, all these programming products, they need to have a place uh, in uh, your business. It needs to be well thought through. It needs to be strategic. But, you but, don't so, don't you think, but don't you think that uh, there is a lot of uh, social conditioning? Because they've been uh, in this um, seminar like we've been. They've seen all these big names on stage. Mm -hmm. They admire them greatly. They fell in love with, with their, their passion, with their uh, eloquence, with their uh, performance. It's almost like being an actor on stage, yes? Uh -huh, and, yeah. um, and, and when you are telling them the truth, you go there, Simone, and you go on the same stage in front of the same people, and you are telling them it's hard work, is what you make of it. Mm -hmm. I cannot be you. I could only guide you. Do you think they are going to choose you or them? What do you think they are going to choose? They are going to choose uh, what they believe to be true. They're going to choose what resonates most with them. Some people in that room, they're going to resonate with uh, the big gurus and other people in that room, they are going to resonate with me. And uh, I'm completely detached from I'm it. resonating with you to, to tell you from now, yes? I'm resonating yeah. with you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, so I've done, uh, I do around 200 events a year. So I do a lot of events. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that, that's around... almost each other day. <laughs> yeah, I have about 200 events a year. I did... Uh, 800 events uh, in the past six years in total. So I've always been speaking. I'm not talking attending. I'm talking speaking and delivering and for our clients. So what I found out is that uh, when you are selling, when you are there selling yourself, you have to convince people about why your methodology works, why what you believe works. And then, but you don't have to convince too hard. You have to share your personal story so then they can connect with you. And some of these people, they will immediately resonate with you. Some of the other people, then they will say, um, this is not the right guy for me. I'll give, you, I'll give you a perfect example. I was having a session today with a client and we were working on their strategy uh, for their business uh, because they run events for construction companies. And they wanted to have more clients and to convert more clients from these uh, networking events that they run with their audience there. So while we we're going through the session, then uh, this guy said, do you know why I'm working with you, Simone? And this guy is uh, is much older than me. <laughs> uh, he is much older than me. He's, uh, he's been, uh, he has been 40 years in the construction industry. But then he said, do you know why I'm working with you, Simone? And I, said, and I asked him, why did you work with me? said, because I've seen you on another podcast. I've seen you from a podcast on the APCTC show. And I said, okay, that, that's great. Thank you very much for letting me know. 
but then do you know why I choose you? And then I said, no, tell me why did you chose me? I said, because what you said resonated with me. What the other guy was saying didn't resonate with me too much, but what you said resonated with me. So I started following you. I went into your email list and then you were sending me those emails. And then you asked for a consultation and then I want, I subscribe to your podcast. And then I started listening to your podcast. And then I decided to have a consultation with you and to approach you to see how we can work together. But that's how it started. And this guy has been working with big gurus, big multimillionaires. But then something in me said, he's the right person for me at this stage right now. So I think that also to answer your question, some people actually will choose both. They will want the big guru because uh, they want to be in their aura. I think that uh, I emceed the, the, the event with Les Brown a few years ago in London. Uh, I was the MC. There were a thousand people in the room. It was brilliant. And just the very fact of being in the energy of Les Brown is something magical. I cannot describe it with words. You know, there are some people that have a huge aura, right? They, they are, you cannot express it in words. You just need to be them. Uh, I felt the same when I went to, uh, to see Tony Robbins as well. You find those people that you can feed from their presence. And there are few people like that. And let's but, brown but don't you one feel, of them. It's absolutely, I absolutely agree with you. And I absolutely adore both of them. And they've been instrumental into my own discovery. And uh, I, I walked on fire, and after I walked on fire, I, I understood something I couldn't see before. I realized that everything has to start with the end in mind. Unless you have clarity on your vision, you cannot deliver. Absolutely. And, you know, what happened at the end of the walk, the fire walk, uh, I went back and I queued again twice because I thought the charcoals weren't hot enough because I'm, I have very sensitive skin. So I thought they're going to take me straight to the uh, emergency unit because I, I have a very sensitive skin. And when that did not happen, I felt absolutely nothing. I done it again and again, just to understand how it's possible that while I was thinking that at the end people will celebrate me, mm -hmm. I did not think of the hot charcoals, which are actually burning my feet, but they did not burn my feet. So for me it was a breakthrough moment and yeah. I'm, I'm very grateful to tony robbins I, I i feel that if it wasn't for that experience i would uh, give up long ago because nothing was working and all these um programs i was paying I, I i think i bought every single program that there is out there <laughs> and i was that hungry that desperate to find yes. out what it is that makes me me and yeah. you see what I realized since, because I've been um, by total accident or twist of fate or the universe who conspires all the time with us, I've been asked to speak in front of 10,000 people mm -hmm. and to share my story. And I did not know I have a story. I was thinking what they want from me. I mean, I don't have a story. And then I spoke from the heart and uh, I, I realized that it wasn't, it was my story. Yes. But it was it wasn't mine to keep. It was mine to share. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And something magical, like you said, something magical happened on stage. On that moment, I had this revelation. I had perhaps the biggest revelation of my life that I have a story to share and it is not mine to keep. And I'm like everybody else because everybody, each one of us got a story. I am that Greek soldier mm -hmm. who was running wounded mm -hmm. all the way from marathon to athens to deliver the good news the war is over because my message was that actually doesn't matter you never learned english doesn't matter you never been um uh, on, on on a big uh, stage doesn't matter who you are where you are coming from all that matters is to 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 share the good news to become the good news and share the good news to have a solution like you have our listeners, I'm sure they're going to take notes, they're going to be in touch with you, and I'm sure they will come to, to the author's awards to meet you in person if they can't see you before, simply because you are the good news for them. And you are the good yeah. news for me, and I hope I'm the good news for you. <laughs> so somehow the message is the war is over. So you you run a coaching company or you you run you have a, a, 
a program, uh, a coaching program, or have a book, or you have a solution, the war is over. You have a solution, and you have a solution for the people who got the solution, which is yeah. even more powerful. But yeah. something magical happens on stage. I think it's when you realize that you are a godsend. You are somebody that is carrying a good message. It's, it's passing on the light. You mm -hmm. are somebody who could actually be remembered by carrying the light. Because yes. you have light inside yourself. And yes, it is your charisma. And yes, it is your, your good heart. And yes, it is your love for people. But it is your curiosity about who you truly are that made you into the person who you are right now, that mm -hmm. made you into somebody that is, is able to connect with total strangers. And in the meantime, you'll still discover yourself. Mm -hmm. Because it's this journey where each one of us is taken into the unknown, into serendipity. I don't know where I'm going. You don't know where you are going. Even you have something absolutely magnificent. You don't know. You did not even scratch the surfaces of who you truly are. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a book. Uh, I, I, I wrote more than one book, but at some point I wrote a book about um, called Broadcast Your Passion. And mm -hmm. now that book, three years later, because I think it takes about 1,000 days for something to, to manifest and become um, become Vis visible um, and now it's becoming a tv channel so mm -hmm. you, you see i could not imagine at the time but i had to write that book i had to to and i wrote it in my way back from um singapore so it wasn't about me it was about me but it wasn't for me it was for the people who could benefit from it i was having a good message i was having good news for somebody else total strangers including myself. Mm -hmm. So I love the way you, 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 you mentioned um, that everybody is unique. But I want you to, to remember that you are stardust. Each, each atom in your body is coming from a different star. So what mm -hmm. are you going to do about it? Are you going to ignore it? Are you going to say, no, I'm not good enough? Are you going to find all these excuses? I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm too whatever it is that you could use as an excuse or you are going to go all in and discover what you are about and package your stardust into a solution for the people who struggle. And it's a choice, a very personal choice. Well, how, how would you define success, Simone? How do I define success? I define success as uh, what makes me happy. I think that everyone uh, has uh, different goals. Everyone has different dreams. Everyone has a different definition of success. Personally, for me, is uh, to be, there are a few definitions of success because there are different areas of my life. So I don't think uh, success just relates to one area. Uh, one area of my success is my business area, which means uh, to be the number one person to create community for experts. So what I want to achieve in the business is for GTEx to become the number one organization internationally to um, get all the experts from different industry together and uh, give them a system, give them processes, give them help, give them support, give them the community to explode their expert business. So that's one area which I'm constantly working on because um, in everything I do, I want to be the best. That's the kind of person I am. I don't go half in or half out. I went in the catering industry at the age of 19, I was one of the best in my field. Now, in the speaking industry, I won the award as best speaker of the year APCTC in 2016. So I achieved that. So it's all about for me, how can I be the best? But being the best for me means delivering the best because it's not myself that needs to say I am the best. It's other people that need to say Simone is the best. So when other people will say Simone is the best, then I'm happy. <laughs> right? So that's one of the ideas of success that I have. The other one is uh, around family. For me, family is uh, incredibly important. Uh, I don't know if uh, because I'm Italian or because of the way I was raised, but uh, I love spending time uh, with my wife. I want to have time to spend time with my family, with the people that I love. And I don't want my vision of success or being the best uh, to then compromise this uh, time that uh, I want to spend with them. And then the other idea is uh, to then leave a legacy leave something that can live beyond 
me beyond uh, my physical life, my physical body right now, but have something that uh, people will keep enjoying it and having results years and years and decades and centuries after my life is done. So these are my different parts and the definition of success. Wow, I, 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 I so love what you just said. And you I feel that uh, because we are unique um, creations, what defines us is not what we receive or we don't receive in life, is what we do with what we receive or we don't receive in life. Because for example, coming back to your story, you've been um, given the chance to, to be a Michelin chef and uh, rub shoulders. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't a chef. I was working on the floor. I know. I know. Uh, but the, yeah. I'm just saying. Just but yeah. you could go that way, yes, because you are in that industry. So perhaps yeah. the next stage was for you to to go to the next level, and you would have gone there. But you felt that there is more. Mm -hmm. So you've been given that opportunity, but you thought you are more than that. So you done something about something you don't have in your life. You had no um, guidance, no strategy. Uh, you just knew that you are going to make it and you are going to make it a big success because you are not the um, half measure kind of person. You are not just in, you are all in. Absolutely. And I think I think this is the definition of success. If I, if I have to, um, to, to put it in uh, three words, uh, would be you are stardust or I could translate that with go all in there are no half measures mm -hmm. there isn't such thing like i'll do a little bit of this and then a little yeah. bit of that and then i'll see what's next i think going all in is when you acknowledge your 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 talent acknowledge you are very resourceful you are able to give because what really makes you abundant is giving you realize that the more you give the more abundant you feel and giving doesn't necessarily mean giving charity or, you know, in a charitable way, but giving sometimes is giving the light into somebody's life, into bringing your own light on somebody else's dark sky when mm -hmm. nobody else is there for them. So I think the kind of giving we are talking is, is way, way beyond money and um, materialistic things. Absolutely. And we've been conditioned to, to feel that success is about uh, outside goals, that successful means uh, I have a very nice house and I have a, a very ex uh, exclusive or exotic holidays uh, once a month or whatever it is. And uh, I, I achieve all of that. And then I felt um, that I don't know what's next. So I retired when I was 51 years old and now I'm 56 years young. And that perhaps is telling you what is my definition about success. But I, I, I really want to, to, to say that um, perhaps the most important um, thing about success is to come out from a trance that um, makes you or allows you to find excuses to yourself. Uh, once you come out of that trance, you, you realize that uh, success means you and is what you make of it. And uh, coming back to success, because uh, I have a couple, of, I'm reading a couple of questions coming from uh, our listeners. Um, yeah. I don't know why they don't post it, but anyway, uh, perhaps they are very uh, shy. Um, <laughs> I feel that uh, success um, is um, is your birthright. Uh, mm -hmm. is, is not um, reserved for the few. It's not for the 5% of society. It's not for the 1% of society. It is your birthright. You just need to put your name on it. Absolutely. I, I completely agree. I completely agree with that. And um, I think that we are already successful as we are. It, it depends of how, what are we doing with our life. It depends of are we, are we pursuing our goals? Are we going all in, as I was saying before? Uh, is this, are we living in alignment with the, who we are? So I think that a great definition of success is for me, as long as I live in alignment with who I am and my personality and my goals, uh, and I keep working towards it and I keep expanding, but as long as I'm living in my truth, I'm successful. 
And uh, of course, there are different aspects of success, as you were suggesting. There are uh, <laughs> conditions that to believe that money equals success, that uh, having a great family equals success. But there, I know really happy people I consider really successful that uh, they don't not, they are not multimillionaires. They are they work in a job that they absolutely love, and that's their success. Other people that don't have a family, they don't want a family. They just want to stay by themselves, and they're incredibly happy about that. Actually, they maybe had a family before, and they were really miserable, and now they're incredibly happy. So everyone has their own idea of success. And if we're going in the work that we do, when we are working with experts and other speakers and other trainers, the first thing that we do when we help them map out their businesses is to ask them, what's important for you? Because, you know, I'm sure that uh, maybe you fell on that trap. I definitely felt on that trap too. To modeling someone else's success, to modeling someone else's business. Because, uh, you know, you're told to follow the steps of other successful people, right? But then uh, I didn't stop at that time to ask myself, is that what I really want? Do I want their ca- that kind of lifestyle? Uh, for example, there is this uh, amazing idea of, uh, you know, have an online business, have an online business. Now, to have an online business, you you need to love to spend a lot of time behind the laptop because you will spend a lot of time behind your laptop if you have an online business. And then there are these people that actually they thrive in having uh, conversations with other people, in meeting physical people. And then just because they are thought this uh, incredible idea of having this online business, they make themselves miserable and spend all their days in front of a laptop with no other human connection. And they wonder why they don't like the, their business that they are in. So I think that every time we go for a goal, in particular in our businesses and our lives, it's always go back to ask ourselves, what's important for us? What's important for me? And align everything else to what's important for me. So then, uh, because it's going to be work, right? <laughs> Marina, it's going to be work anyway. It, there is a lot of work. and I, I, I'll So tell as you long as you're happy about the work that you're exactly. doing and the work that you're doing makes you happy, then, then you're fine. <laughs> as long as it doesn't feel like a chore, doesn't feel like work. So Exactly. Um, I, I'm running my shows only Monday and Friday, not Monday to Friday, Monday and Friday, right? So yeah. because I, I, I have uh, other hobbies and I have other interests and uh, I, I love to invest in property, for example, and um, apart from um, spending time with, with people I love. So only Monday and Friday, but then uh, because I, I was off, I had this uh, heavy flu for a couple of weeks. We, I don't usually get ill, but just got me. So it was a very good time to reflect about everything. Mm-hmm. But then I came back to work. Um, yesterday i think and um all this time uh i could not speak right so i could not wait till friday which is today so i had to have a show (laughs) first day when i came and i had all these people waiting and i thought okay who wants to to go tonight who is free (laughs) to speak tonight so because i just couldn't wait it is work but doesn't feel like work yes absolutely there is also the fact that um I'm running red carpet events and um, everybody, whoever came. uh, So last year we didn't do um, 200, but we've done 26 uh, red carpet events. So that alone, it's a lot of work. So (laughs) we had uh, hundreds of people and uh, everybody had a great experience. You know, Florin, they even walked in a different way. But guess what? Now all these people that are coming to our events, they're all starting their own events. And I told them, it is okay to to mirror somebody else's formula. And you have to find that there is only one way you could find out if it's something you love or hate. It's like mermaid. Give it a go. (laughs) (laughs) Give it a go. (laughs) And then you'll see the right thing for you or not. (laughs) Exactly. So some people, they start running their own events. They absolutely love it. Some people hate it. Asking me, how do you do it? It's so much hard work. But you see, it is that a uh, fine line between passion and um, and I don't know what's the antonym of passion, but <laughs> so so when it's it's when you broadcast your passion, I used to say to people, um, forget marketing. People were complaining. I don't know. I have an idea, but I don't know how to monetize it. I don't know how to do the marketing. I bought all these programs. I hire all these people. Nothing works. So I'm telling them, 
look, I'm the same. I I didn't even have Facebook when I when I started the journey five years ago. So <laughs> so so ridiculous now. But actually, I did not have Facebook. Somebody made it for me, and uh, because they were asking me, what is your Facebook page? I thought, what's that? You know. So <laughs> so so it is true to say that um, passion is your air it's 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 everything um it, it's the light is the air it's everything you need to grow your big idea and to um even you don't know it's a big idea to start with but the truth is that unless you make it big to accommodate a lot of people who could benefit from it it's not going to work if your uh, idea is to make enough money to pay your rent for example or pay your mortgage how far is that going to take you? You are going to be absorbed into somebody else's dream. But when you have your own passion and when you take risks and you learn the lessons and um, you 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 put it down to, to learning. And I made mistakes, very costly mistakes. And I always thought, well, I learned this, you know, and this is more valuable than the money I, I had to, <laughs> to come um to cover that mistake but i i feel uh, in many ways um marketing is a frightening word and uh if you start with what frightens you instead of thinking of what is uh, the end what is the outcome it's always put putting you back and is killing the dream so i used to say um forget marketing broadcast your passion see where that takes you and could really take you far uh, even now I don't know where is all this taking us, but let's see where the stardust, the stardust is going to take us. So what is your view on marketing? Uh, what would be your advice on uh, marketing your, your events? How could you uh, convert um, people in a room and um, how could you bring people to the room? So th there are questions that are coming. I'm, I'm reading them <laughs> now. <laughs> So, so I just wonder if you could pick uh, any of these um, struggles and um, and go into it and of explain course. our listeners what what is your solution to it. Of course, I would love I would love to explain that. And, you, you don't have you don't you don't need to go into the the actual um, secret of your 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 teaching. You just need to perhaps um, tell them as much as you can, so they could come back to you for more to to learn the rest of it. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to I'm share. I'm happy to share everything. Share. That's how I am. I'm sharing everything. If I'm asked a question, I share it uh, okay. as long as I have the time to share it. Now, uh, and I believe that there is no secret. Everything can be found everywhere. Uh, that, that's just my my belief on that. But I, to add on what you said, you were talking about passion and marketing. I believe that passion is crucial and is really important because if you're doing something that you're not passionate about, then you're just going to end up being doing another thing that makes you miserable. So passion, I think that is the fuel to get you moving. But then you need to also have the strategy because the passion without a strategy, it doesn't get you that far. It gets you moving, but it doesn't get you there, <laughs> right? Yeah. So if you're, if you're looking, you can be, I remember I was really passionate. I was really passionate. I was sharing my passion every single day, but... Uh, there was no strategy behind it. So I was <laughs> putting out all this energy and all this effort out there. But because there was no structure, I couldn't really monetize it or I couldn't really fine tune uh, the message that I had to put out in order to attract that response. So I think that is a, is a mixture of both. You need to have the passion because without passion, people would not resonate with you and you will make your life miserable again. But also you need to have the strategy part. So you've already talked about passion. Let me talk about strategy right now. Talking about filling up events, there are a few things that work incredibly well. Now, if you think about the event scene right now, and uh, I'm sure that you can definitely agree with me, there are so many events out there. Free events, paid events, seminars, webinar. There are events. Everyone now is doing an event. So it's not that easy as it was uh, 10, 15 years ago, where there were <laughs> maybe few events. <laughs> now there are hundreds of events every week. So your competition is high. And uh, what you want to understand is that uh, what's the psychology of people? Before someone will uh, move their bum from their couch to an event room, they need to have a reason why. 
there are two reasons why. One is that they want absolutely to learn something. And the second reason why is that they want to absolutely learn something from you. And I think if you focus on the second part, that's where the magic happens. Because I'm sure that you can, if you, you know, if you just broadcast your event, you might find some people, they might get in touch with you, but they might not buy. And it's going to be more difficult to convert them into clients. However, if you spend time up front to build a relationship with them, so let's say you give them something for free. It can be a PDF. It can be a webinar that you're doing for them for free. You have somewhere that they can experience, where they can experience you before they meet you live. Then it will be more likely for them to buy the ticket to the event, attend the event, and then buy from you because you spend the time up front building that relationship. Instead, of what happens? A lot of speakers, what they do, they decide to run an event. They have no audience. They haven't built a relationship with anyone. And they expect to put a link on Eventbrite or their meetup group that they've just started and expect hundreds of people to be at that event. Well, that's probably not going to happen. So focus first on building the audience. And how do you build your audience and your following as a speaker? The best way is to speak on other people's stages. Speak on other people's events. Why? Because they already bring the audience that wants to learn that topic to you. So then they have seen you already speaking. And then at the event, then you give them an option to an opportunity to see you at the other event. If you do that and you just focus on it as a speaker, you will fill up your events incredibly quick and incredibly fast. And that's personally the strategy that I use the strategy that I see a lot of the gurus <laughs> using still now, even if they have the huge list, they still do that. And people that are really influential in the event space. So find other events that are find that have the audience that you want to talk to. Blow them away. Give them as much value as possible and give them an opportunity to come and see you at your own event. Then if you just focus on that, it will be incredibly great. And uh, as I said, we do 200 events a year. We have events where with the 20 people in the room, uh, we make 70,000 to 100,000 pounds in, in, in the arc of three days. So even uh, this is to just share a myth that there is, that if you want to make a lot of money from events, you need to run a big event. Not true. A big event needs, and I'm sure you know that, the bigger the event, the more the costs. <laughs> <laughs> because events are not cheap. <laughs> this is the most important thing. So people are coming out and say, I'm going to run this event and I'm going to have a thousand people in the room. Do you know that to get a thousand people in the room probably is going to cost you around a hundred thousand pounds between marketing costs, venue costs and everything else. <laughs> so do you have a hundred grand to spend upfront to get that thousand people in the room? If yes, great. If not, uh, why don't you start with the 10 people in the room <laughs> and then you see how it works. Right? So start from where you are, fill up the event in this way, speak on other people's stages and uh, in particular, focus on the conversion because as long as you become great at selling from the stage, and this is what we teach in all of our courses, and you don't have to teach to sell in the run or the back of the room way if you don't like it, you can find a much softer way can give an application form for people to apply and then you close them one-to-one. -one. You can build a relationship with them and close them at a, another point. You can invite them to buy there and then, but with a softer close. So it depends on who you are as a person and you find your natural way of selling, then you can literally have events with 10, 15, 20 people and make really good money from it. And that's, I think, where the industry is going more. That's what I'm really excited about teaching as well. Wow, brilliant. I can't wait to, to meet you on the red carpet at the Stardust, um, at, the, at the Authors Awards. And uh, later on in the year, we have uh, the Stardust Award 2018. Uh, a lot of people already register from all over the world. So it is all about um, storytelling. It's all about yeah. sharing the Stardust story. Somebody who made it, somebody who put his name on, on, on that uh, solution, somebody who is abundant and giving makes them uh, even more resourceful. So I, I would like to, to, to say 
that uh, I learned I learn great deal of, of things uh, from our listeners uh, who are asking uh, very smart questions, actually, and uh, from your answers. And I'm very, very grateful you, you grace us with your presence. And um, I want to, to say this and make it official. Um, Simone, you are stardust. How do you say in Italian, you are stardust? Oh, polvere di stelle. <laughs> All very distant. So there you go. <laughs> Thank from you. both of us, I know you have to run into another interview. Uh, from both of us, uh, until next time, and I promise it's going to be a next time. Um, Paul very distant. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs>